Hello, welcome back to another episode of Land Rover Restorations. Um, this episode we will be hopefully doing the wiring loop. <laughs> I know I've been talking about it for a long time, but it is on its way, I'm convinced. So, prior to the wiring loom, there's a couple of things we have to do that I'll show you now. Okay, so we have... I've just got the battery, which is like a... Um, designed to look like a, an old-fashioned battery with the lead, lead terminals on top. Shield classic battery, which I'm actually quite chuffed with, looks quite nice. We'll do when it's all clamped in there. So, we need the battery, but we also need the clocks. So, um, that's my next, next task. I'm going to strip all the clocks out, take everything off of here, clean all this up um, back to metal, prime it, paint it blue grey. Because as you can see, a lot of the wire and loom comes here. So then I can get on and collect all the wire and loom up, and the ignition, which I've just had refurbished, sits in there. Um, so, yeah, we'll get all that ready, and then obviously that goes in the middle section there. Uh, what I didn't show you is I've just put the flaps back on, the vent flaps. So I've just literally put these back on. They operate obviously like that. There is a seal that is supposed to be um, like a seal that clamps in there but what I've done is got the this foam that I used on the cab um, which is double sided stuck that on there which actually works really well um, I don't think it matters it's not original rubber going in there um, just as long as it's functional I have cleaned up the handles this side and then lacquered them and they just sit up there so they're all cleaned up now and lacquered I'm going to put them on once. I've just given this a quick coat of paint here because we had some red come through from the front. So I've just got to give this inside, this little bit here, a coat of paint. Probably when I've got the paint out doing the, that section there. Um, and then obviously that can go in. But what I'll do is I'll show you, um, show you a bit of that once we've done it. Somebody did ask if I could show more... Um, all the way that we restore parts, but basically all I do is all the metal parts, any of these um, components, is literally we just take them apart, clean them, take them back to metal normally. If they're obviously steel, they can be sprayed direct with just a, a black, you know, there's lots of direct to, to metal paints, um, and then just spray them and literally reassemble them. And that's exactly what I do with these clocks. So when these are all taken apart, obviously this bit will all go back to blue. Um, I'll clean all this up. I might do this in like a silver zinc colour. I think that's what it should be maybe. Uh, do that in silver, clean all these up, take all the wires off. Um, so yeah, it's real straightforward, cleaning up and painting things. And then we get it all back in. So next time we'll sh show you how this is getting on. Um, and then yeah, we can, if the wiring loom isn't here, which it has to be, we can um, possibly look at the wings or the bonnet getting that cleaned up or possibly even the doors I suppose we can put the doors on we are ready so, yeah okay then just a quick update so took everything out and cleaned it back to bare metal because there's so many layers of paint on it and just sprayed it with a primer so now that's going to go blue, blue grey I'll paint the back blue grey as well um, all the clocks, so if you look you can see you can see a little bit of folded metal around there, so basically you just unfold that metal um, and I can spray these rims, I think yeah they would have used to be in black, well I think, I don't know, I'll have to have a look, see maybe silver actually, yeah it looks like they might have been silver. So I spray them with some, probably some chrome paint, I spray the back with some zinc paint, I take all the rest off, all the sweat, all the lights, all the sweat come out. So, and again, same with this, I'll strip it down, unclip it all, clean everything up. So next time you will see this, hopefully it will all be in one piece, all rebuilt, all looking clean, ready to go back in the vehicle. Okay, so we're getting there with this now. 
Um, yeah, all dials clean, put back together. This is the ignition I got rebuilt. That's been put back in, obviously all painted now. Uh, that's a switch that I've just cleaned up. I actually had to paint the knob, it was a bit knackered. Made a bit of a boo-boo. I didn't realise that just here, this hole is a hole that somebody else has cut in for something else that isn't, shouldn't be on here. So basically what I've had to do is, annoying because after I've painted it all, is glue, which I've literally just done, resin this piece of uh, alley over the top. You won't see the back, obviously. Get this resin. Once this resin has gone off, I will then fill this, this tiny hole here with a bit of filler, clean it up and then blend the paint back in, which is annoying, so just painted all this. But it does blend in really well, actually, the, this coach enamel. Um, you, you won't even see. Um, I've cleaned the, like, the bulbs up, repainted the tops of them, so they go... Oops, so they go uh, there, there, and over there. And then she'll be all ready to fit back in. I am just missing one bulb, this one here. It's knackered, it's broken, even the holder's broken. But there is one of these on eBay at the moment for a tenner and I'm winning it. But I don't know if I'm going to be that lucky because they are very expensive. They're like, uh, I think it's like 50 quid or something on eBay, but we will see. Hopefully I'll win one. Um, but this is almost finished, like I say. Just let that resin go off, fill that, repaint that, done, and paint the back, put the bulbs in, and it's finished. So... While I'm waiting for that resin to go off, I'm just going to make a start on the seat bases. A friend of ours uh, has got a timber yard, and or not a timber yard, a uh, you know joinery workshop, and they have done these pieces of ash. I think they're ash. When we went for the Land Rover Legends, I took some seats off of some other Land Rover Series 1 and looked how they were built. And basically, they've got a frame around the outside, um, and then foam and that on the inside. This is for the seat base. So they've supplied me with all these, which is all the correct... Uh, width and thickness and I've just started well this is the first one I've just cut out so basically they're a length like that with that on the top so I've literally just cut this to length and then obviously it fits in that bit and the rest of the frame sits on top of there goes that way so one two so every seat has two of these one there one there and then two on the top so like I say I've got all these pieces of ash that they've cut for me I'm just going to mark them all up go through and make uh, one two three four five six for the bases with the little uh, with this bit on I made that one first but I got the measurement slightly wrong um, and then and then do the cross pieces at the correct length across there, fix the corners together, probably with some screws or bolts and glue, and then I will give them frames to a friend of ours who's an upholsterer. They will put the, all the bits inside that they need to do and get them coated, same as the, the shovel back bit. So next time, hopefully the seat frames will be made up through there. Um, yeah, and might even have the wiring loom by them. So, seat base is all made up. Just glued, glued and screwed the corners together. Um, obviously, just done that little detail on there. So, yeah, all ready to be covered. Oh, sponges. Cut a sponge in there and a sponge in there with some rubber. I'll let the upholsterer do that because I don't really know. So yeah, all ready to go, all seat bases ready to go. What I'll do is probably clean the seat backs up as well, the shovel backs, um, and give them to him at the same time so he can upholster them as well. And we'll have seats in it. Okay, so it's a bit dark, you can't see because I've got the Land Rover sheeted over, but the dashboard's finished. I'll show you again later. So it's sheeted over at the moment because we're going to make a start on the doors. The first stage, get all the paint stripped, see what we've got underneath there. Might be some writing, might be something that's quite exciting under there, but possibly not. <laughs> might be all gone, but we'll have a look and I'll update you if there is. Okay, so we had a bit of an explanation 
I've got through all over the Land Rover, as I've been stripping bits off, you've got this green that somebody's brush painted on top, and then underneath there's quite a good yellow before you get down to the red, before you get down to the blue. But the yellow is actually quite a good paint, whoever's done it, has done a good job of it. Um, we've just exposed the writing on here, you probably can't quite see it on here. It actually says Gloucestershire Highways. So in, well, you might be able to see it. I sanded this door back a bit so we could read it on this door. Yeah, you can kind of see the highway. Gloucestershire Highway. So basically, when it finished its time with the RAF in its red, they obviously sold it. Well, the highways, Gloucestershire Highways, obviously bought it off the RAF. And then they painted it yellow. So it started off blue when it left the factory, went to the RAF. They painted it red into an aircraft crash rescue unit, it did its time there, and then it went to work for Gloucestershire Highways. So yeah, all good. Right, I'm going to carry on getting these stripped back, get both the doors stripped either side, and then obviously we'll paint them back to the red they were originally, and take it from there. Okay, so... Unfortunately, no interesting writing on the red. There's the red. I'm just trying to take the yellow off the top. But like I said just now, the people who painted the yellow on did a really good job. So they prepped this red quite well and then painted it on when it was obviously used for the highways. Um, so yeah, there probably wouldn't be any RAF writing on here because they would have uh, sanded all that back before they painted it with the yellow. Um, yeah, I was trying to take it back to the red, but. Looks like it's going to have to all come off a bit damage here. So do a bit of panel beating, get that flat and a bit of filling. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably enough and then enough filming and I'll show you when we're all painted unless I find some emblem or something underneath on the red. But like I say, I don't think I will because uh, when it was done in yellow they did a real, real good job of it. Okay. Okay, so that door is all totally stripped, ready for... The galvanised to be cleaned up and sealed and then primed, so that's all ready to go. There was some writing on this green section, like the door top, that I couldn't see. So I'm just showing you this. So this has just got the paint stripper working. You can see there's 10 million layers, then the yellow, then the red, and then there's the bare metal. Actually. But on this door top, we have found this writing, Field Cable Party. I'm currently looking into what that means. And these door tops weren't red. They never have been. I can find no traces of any red paint on here. They were, well, there's metal and there's this greeny colour. So, unsure of what that means at the moment. So, I will find out, hopefully. I'll show you the door tops. <coughs> um, I haven't showed you much preparation, but this is just literally 10,000 layers of paint. Take it all off and then sand it back. It's all bare metal here, pretty much all bare metal here. This is the inside. Um, there's the inside, a bit of filler in the middle. So that's what we do basically take them all back, get them all nice and flat so it feels nice, and then ready for undercoat, which is an etch primer. A couple of layers of that, then ready for colour. And as before, inside, blue, grey, outside, red. So these door tops, field cable party, um, went on the Land Rover series, series 1 forum and can't remember the exact story about what they are, but it was something to do with field cable party was set up to repair all the telecommunication cables. And basically, it, it's nothing to do with the RAF. So... That's why they're the wrong colour, and that's why they're on here, because they're obviously after, after doors, you know, they're put on afterwards. Um, when I look at the door bottoms, these tops here are red all the way across. Well, were, I mean, I've cleaned it all off now, but here is where you still just about to see it, it's still red. Um, but I've cleaned off this side, because this is going to be seen from inside the cab. So if they were red all the way around here and back here, it makes me think that it didn't have door tops, because why would they have sprayed this bit? If the door top goes on here, you know, this should be not sprayed, but it was sprayed. So possibly it didn't have door tops, but I can't think for the life of me why. Um, 
but for you, some practic practic practicality, practicality, I am going to put these door tops obviously back on, blue on the inside, red on the outside. I've got photos of other crash rescue units, and they have got door tops that are red, so that's what I'm going to do. But the good thing is, today, turned up the wiring loom. So it's all here. Big jumble of wires, so we do that. We will do that shortly. I'm going to get these doors finished, undercoated, and then we will undercoat and dry. And while they're drying, I'll probably start on the wiring loom. And I'm not going to spray paint these. I'm going to brush paint these because I can lay them flat and paint them, so they'll be quite easy to do. So yeah, I'll possibly bring you back when we're um, doors are finished. I've already sprayed all the lacquer on the aluminium to cover all that, so that's all lacquered and done. It doesn't look that clean, but it's had a hard life. This uh, galvanising, sorry, not aluminium. This galvanising has had quite a hard life. I had so many layers of paint on it. I've taken 99% of them off, um, but you can still see there's dark patches and stuff. I don't think they look too bad. So yeah, it should all look good. Okay, I'll get you back when we're doing the wiring. Okay, so that's the etch primer. Etch primer, I just went around, quickly masked it. Uh, well, didn't mask it, just held, you know, for Alistair to hold some paper like that, and I held it like that, and then we just sprayed it because it's only the. I'm not going to mask it because I'm painting it with a paintbrush, like I said just now. So, yeah, there's all the etch primer done. So, let these go off now for 24 hours. Um, and then I will give them a quick sand over with some light sandpaper make sure it's all good and then they'll be ready for their top coat so I've done the underside as well so here's the wiring loom that we've been waiting for forever but it's here now so, so I've done a wiring loom or two in the past and when you first opening up, open them up you just think oh my god what do I do so basically what you've got to do is you can just see it's a uh, a yeah, mis mismatch of all sorts of different bits. What's this one say? But they have labelled it, I think. What's this one say? God knows. But you can see it's all different parts. So what you have to basically do is get your manual, start finding out where some colours are, because everything's colour coded, obviously brown, that's quite chunky, that's probably maybe dynamo, I don't know. Um, you've got the yellows up here. Yellow might be light. I can't remember. Anyway, rear lights, and then we've got um, regulator. So, what I'll probably do is rather than having a manual out here, is I'll just print off the wiring diagram. There's a grommet on that bit, so a couple of grommets there. So those bits obviously go through into the dashboard. I guess because they've got the grommets on. So I'll print off a wiring diagram. We start. Um, Start, start getting it in place and uh, yeah, I'll show you as we get on. Okay, I've done the blue on the inside of the doors. So let's dry now, turn them over and I'll do the red on the outside. So in between painting and putting the wire and loom on. So yeah, for those of you who do wire and looms and obviously well, don't know, just get your manual and then it just tells you where all the colours go, um, what goes to where. And you literally just start off somewhere. I mean, I start off fault with regulator. All those colours, those colours, what you way around. Got junction box here. And there's various different bits. So you've got this extra bit here that comes for, like, for the front lights, and then you've got an extra bit here that comes down for the uh, brake uh, switch. Um, I've ordered a new coil just because this one I noticed had a bit of a hole in the side actually so it's ordered a new coil for that so that's just temporary put on at the moment oh we've got a feed that's got to go from oh, I've done the feed yeah feed from there to the coil which is again temporary so yeah just getting there I've put um, all the wires on the back of the dash temporary well they're all fixed on permanently but we're just going to give it a test run in a bit so it does turn over now we have the engine spinning over which is good um, battery cables, new battery cables that go around. 
So yeah, all getting there. You can see the loom up here. That when it's all properly connected, I'll go in and clip it all in place with plastic clips. So yeah, um, next job would be paint the other side of these doors, get them red, and then they can all go back together and go on, um, and hopefully maybe even get it running soon once I have finished the loom. So yeah, a bit more work to do to the loom, and yeah, get in there. Okay, so we were just messing about with it, trying to get things spinning over. Um, took the spark plug out, no spark whatsoever, so I took the, I've just taken the distributor off um, and cleaned the points up, if you've never done that before. It's a classic with these when they've been sat. There's your points. You should just separate them, put some sandpaper in, clean them up. You should get a nice spark there. Right, and then we're going to try and start it. Um, bearing in mind that it hasn't been started for, God knows, 20 years, I don't know. The engine, I'll see if you sort of rebuild it all. So, right, Alistair, you're in there. Okay, um, right, put the key on please, and then press your start button. Uh, we don't, probably won't, won't need to choke it to be honest, as we've been turning it over. So, <laughs> Really nicely as well, actually. I think it just needs a bit of a uh, setting up. Yeah, because it doesn't want to rev out, so I think the ignition might be slightly out, but. Oh, exhaust by that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uncover it. Uncover it. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, she won't quite rev out, so I need to have a bit of a mess about with the ignition um, timing. Make sure that's all good. The coil's not really hooked up properly, and that is totally that coil. Uh, but she runs and sounds quite nice. Okay. Finished and on. So, got some new door handles for it there. Just got to put the door glass in the top. But I think I found out the Series 1 Land Rover Club sells the glass sliding ones for about, I think about 20 30 quid for both sides. So I've just con contacted them today. And it looks like they do the rear glass as well. So find out about that. If they do, I'll replace that with glass, and I'll replace the side with glass. So I've just got to put these little filler slips, uh, little angle bits going up there. So obviously, when we first put the bulkhead on, where the bolt's on there, we weren't sure position. When I hung this door, you could see that the bulkhead was leaning back too far. So I basically undid these here, and the same the other side, and the little adjuster rod the other side. Well, not really an adjuster rod, but then we pulled the uh, whole bulkhead forward a little bit, which made all this door opening here perfect and the height good. Um, the, yeah, the only thing that was a problem is it was too tight here, there wasn't enough room, so basically I just got a washer and stuck it in between there where the bulkhead mounts onto the chassis, so it's just literally moved it forward a tiny amount. So yeah, you can adjust it there, you can adjust the bulkhead on the, where it meets the chassis, and this roof part does, well this bottom roof part does slide back and forth, it's a little bit tight up there, but if you look at Yes, you can see that over the years it has rubbed before, so for some reason it does look, it is a bit tight, but it does miss, it doesn't hit, which is good, and it all shuts, it's obviously a bit loose at the moment because there's no rubber behind it, um, so yeah, good, uh, electric's nearly finished, like I said, it's running now, got the timing sorted, uh, well it was sorted anyway, but yeah, that's something that was quite interesting, the timing was absolutely bang on 10 degrees before, top dead center and it wouldn't run it was running horribly really well it would run but it just didn't rev up very nice 
So I spoke to a couple of uh, Land Rover people and they suggested that you don't do it off the timing mark exactly because over the years all the sprockets and such like wear in the engine um, do it by feel. So I basically slackened off the distributor, twisted it round a little bit more whilst revving the engine and yeah, just got it to run nicely. So it's not firing 10 degrees before but it probably is because um, like I say the worm gears and the chains and everything in the engine's probably just got a little bit of slack and uh, and that's all been accounted for now just by adjusting the uh, rotor that way. So yeah, all good. Next job is uh, find out if the Series 1 Land Rover Club do do these door tops. If they do, great. I'm going to finish the electrics inside so I can get the dashboard back together, get all the lights working on there. There'd just be one green feed coming out to the windscreen wiper. I've got this extra panel now here, which I'm going to paint that obviously blue, and that's for the indicator switch. And I've also got a Lucas indicator switch um, ready to go in, which I'm not sure where that is actually. Oh, there it is. So, yeah. So, a proper Lucas indicator switch just left and right and then that flashes so I'll probably get on and get that finished later on so all the wiring is done and I can get all the dashboard back together while I'm waiting for these door top glasses um, and then we will be starting on them which I kind of had a little go on yesterday front wing just getting it back to metal I've got these real cheap sanding discs for this which I can literally just buzz the paint off um, and then go obviously down in grit to get the aluminium nice and flat um, and then etch prime and paint again so bash out any dents which we've got here ok so we will be doing that next ok then wiring loom is now pretty much done um, got everything back together <coughs> all dashes working, all the lights are working, everything's working now um, See, so yeah, wiring done. Next stage is obviously we are getting the final bits of bodywork, uh, wing and a wing and the bonnet. Uh, I need to source windscreen wipers, which is or windscreen wiper motors, which is going to be a bit of an issue, I think. Um, I thought I'd just show you some of the work. So how I do. Or, yeah, how I do the the bodywork. So with the wings, what we've decided to do with all this is rather than paint strip it, I've just got some heavy duty um, blades for the angle grinder, sanding blades, and we've just literally ground all the paint off by the way back to bare metal. So like I say, so many layers on there. <coughs> Get it back to bare metal, and then all the real bad imperfections just fill with filler, like I've just done. It's all still wet at the moment. It's, it's all just horrible but then I get the electric sander out and buzz all that back nice and flat and then give the whole thing a couple of goes with the electric sander just get rid of all of the, the marks in it get it all back down to nice and smooth and then the primer um, and then the red and on the inside I'm going to do it blue <coughs> and the outside will be red so yeah that's uh, pretty straightforward really just takes time um, around here is the bonnet which will be next so yeah I'll get that all angle grown back to bare metal again it's all nice and straight so there'll be no filling or anything on the, on the bonnet whatsoever it will literally just be mass clean and a spray there's the tub and that will be a lot of work so the, the next video also may be a bit slow because there's just a lot of body work to do Filling, straightening, sanding, getting it all back, and then painting. Got to replace these cappings and things. So quite a lot of work to do on that, but um, we are getting there, and we are nearly there. If it all works now, runs fine, starts fine. Um, got starting handle for it the other day, so I'm going to try and start it a bit later on when we're nearly finished with the starting handle. Um, so yeah, all good. So that might be it for this video, it depends on how long it is, um, or I might 
add a bit more. Oh, see how long it is. It's longer. Can make up um, a strip, probably of aluminium that I've got from other series vehicles that I've done in the past uh, for above the windscreen, um, and then I'm going to get somebody to write the aircraft crash rescue on it, like it said. Oh yeah, that was a point when I was stripping the wings down. We found that there. I presume that's number seven. If anybody knows what that means, you can let me know. But uh, obviously that's a disc that goes on the front of you always see it on military Land Rovers. Um, and I took that off. And we gently took the paint off, and there's a number seven painted on there. So whether it was, I don't know, maybe seventh in the fleet or something, I don't know. I'm going to clean it up and obviously get that number seven back on there again, get that painted. Um, yeah. And then we're looking good, get the air truck crash rescue across the top. And in the tub at the back, we have the, we're going to have the frame for it to hold the ladders. I'm just on the lookout for some wooden ladders that I can put on the roof to make it look right. Um, yeah, uh, seats soon. Steering wheel's all okay, just got to clean that up. Um, did the dipstick switch the other day, which is down there, wired that in. Indicator switch, which is there, I wired that in. Um, that's a feed for the either single or double wiper motors. Um, what's my next? Well, I've got that little switch here. I've taken this off, cleaned it up. Uh, Lucas brake light switch, and again, it operates the same as the cold start switch. Literally just put your contacts together, and that mounts in there, and then that spring pulls it when you when you put your foot on the brake, basically. So yeah. Obviously, strip them two ends off, put them on there. That's that one done. But yeah, uh, not much more to show at the moment. It's just body work and it is slow, and that's why it's taken me a long time between videos. But uh, it's worth spending the time. I mean, it's not immaculate, as you can see. This door, if you look here, you can see old dents and things. But I didn't want it to be immaculate. Immaculate it just wants to be nice and tidy and up together, which I hope it is. So yeah, that might be the end of this video. Um, next one will be more bodywork, wheels, get the wheels done, get them cleaned up. I've got to look at the colour of them actually, I'm not sure whether they should be red. Um, yeah, I would have thought they have to be red, but uh, I'll have a look, see what colour they've got to be, and what tyres I need, get them cleaned up, get them painted in the next video, tyres fitted, wheels on. Wings will be done by them, then on bonnet, and then we'll just be missing a tub. Um, I'll put the steering wheel on and go for a drive. <laughs> That'd be cool. Okay, probably catch you in the next video. Cheers.